Hey everybody, we're at Module 7, Lesson 26, page 195 in your 6C book. We are finishing up Module 7 today and finishing up our line plots. We are going to use the data in the table, this time about how long shoelaces are. Um, which is funny, to make a, a line plot about the length of student shoelaces in Miss Henry's class. It says to plot only the lengths of shoelaces given. One, two, three, four, five. That's one of those easy numbers to plot, I think. To get five, I'm going to draw one line down the middle, one line at each end, and then one in between each of those lines. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're doing the best. So we are going to title this length of student shoelaces. Whoops, going to run out of room there. That's okay. The length of student shoelaces. We're going to go ahead and put the numbers on our number line. 27, 36, 38, 40, and 45. Now, obviously, these are not evenly spaced numbers. But on our line plot, we're just going to be showing, we're going to be comparing to see which is more and less. We're not really worried about making the number line perfect. So the number of shoelaces for 27 is 6. The highest number we need is 10. So I'm going to try to make it only go up a certain part. Here we go. 1, 2, three, four, five, six, 36. Now this is the big one, 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Just made it in. For 38 now, there's 9, almost the same. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then it drops way off. Look at that. The length of shoelace is 40 inches. There were only 3. 1, 2, 3. And 45, there were two. One, two. So take a second, before we even look at the questions, take a second, look at our line plot. Look at that line plot. What do you see? Well, obviously, they can't be too short. If your shoelaces are too short, they're not going to be able to lace into your shoes. You'll run out of room. You won't be able to tie them. So there is a cutoff as to how short your shoelaces can be. Not really sure there's a cutoff to how long they are, but I think we all know that when your shoelaces are too long, it gets hard to tie them. You can still trip, right? So there is probably a sweet spot for how long shoelaces are that they're long enough to tie easily, but not so long that they still drape over the side of your shoe after you've tied them. Yeah? So just looking at this, again, the first question, how many shoelaces were measured? Now we know what we need to do though. Nothing to do with the measurement has to do with the number of people that were involved in this data gathering. So we need to add these numbers together. 
I see the 10 there. I can't make a 10 right off. So I am going to add three and two. What do we know about three and two? What is that? That's going to be five. Do we know what five and six? Five and six, if it were five and five, it'd be 10. Six is one more, so it's 11. So five plus six is 11. So we've got three out of the way. We've got two out of the way. Now we've added in our six. Hmm. I can add the 10 pretty easily. 10 plus 11. Just going to add one 10 to that. And we have two 10s and one. So now we've added in our 10. The only thing left is the nine. And that's not going to be too difficult. 21 plus 9. If I add the 9 and the 1, what do I get? 10. So then 20 plus 10, 30. So how many shoelaces were measured? 30. How many more shoelaces are 27 or 36 than there are 40 and 45. They're asking us to compare two numbers, but they've given us four numbers. So we have to start by combining 27 and 36 and 40 and 45. 40 and 45 are pretty easy. 40, there were three. 45, there are two. So this number is how much? Five. Now, not quite as easy to add six and 10. Oh, yes, it is. 10 plus six is 16. Put that in there. All right, so find a space on your paper where you can have room to add this up because we're going to need to add 16 plus 5. So 6 and 5 are, we already did that up there, 6 and 5 are 11, and then we have 10 left. So 10 plus 11, we actually did that too, didn't we? That is 21. That's not right at all. I'm so sorry. Boys and girls, we are not adding those two numbers together. We are not trying to find out how many there are all together. We added these. Now we need to know the difference. I'm sorry if some of you are saying, Miss Brody, what are you doing? We need to find the difference between 16 and 5. When we're finding the difference between two numbers, when we are comparing two numbers, we are subtracting. So we can either say 16 minus 5 equals blank, or we can say 5 plus blank equals 16. So we can subtract or we can count up to. All right. Counting up would usually be the arrow way, but you can kind of do it in your head too. Subtracting isn't that difficult either, though, because we can just subtract our 1s. 6 minus 5 is 1, and we have a 10 left. So 16 minus 5 is 11. If I'm adding on, I could say 10 plus 5 would be 15, and then we need one more than that to get to 16. So again, it would be 11. So how many more shoelaces are at 27 or 36 than at 40 and 45? 11 more. Sorry about that. I know that's already a confusing concept. We need to draw a conclusion 
as to why zero students had a 54 inch shoe leg. What do you think? If only a two people had 45, that's almost 10 inches more. What would be a problem if you had shoelaces that long? The laces would be too long. You would trip. For these data, a plot line or a table is easier to read. Which one is easier to read? Well, which one did we use the most as we were answering these questions? For these questions, I would have to say that the table is easier to read. When I need to be comparing numbers, I don't want to be counting data points. I want to be looking at my numbers and be able to use them. If they were asking more questions about which was more, which was less, then this is a good pattern to look at. But when I have to really crunch the numbers, I want to be able to see my numbers laid out. So I would say a table is easier because I can see the numbers. If you need to pause to catch up, go right ahead. I'm going to go to the second page. So this is page 196, just going to the next page. And again, we're going to make a line plot and answer some questions. This table describes the lengths of crayons in centimeters in Ms. Harrison's crayon box. Ooh. How many crayons were these different centimeters? That's interesting. Okay. So, we're going to call this length. of Miss Harrison's crayons. And again, I couldn't make it fit in the title. That's okay. How many points do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. My favorite number of lines. One in the middle, one at each end. And then halfway. So we have our consecutive numbers here. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight centimeters. That would have to be almost brand new crayon. For four centimeters, there were four crayons. One, two, three, four. For five centimeters, how many? Seven, almost twice as many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For six centimeters, there were nine. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. Got a little sloppy there. For seven centimeters, there were three crayons that measured seven. One, two, three. And for eight centimeters, only one crayon. So look again at the pattern in our uh, line plot. The 
there is a very, very common, um, obvious, most common length. Six and five is pretty close. So seven and nine, that's very similar. And then down here, way fewer. There's only four and three and one. Uh, again, they're asking us how many grams are in the box. We need to not look at length now. We need to look at the number of crayons. And again, I'm going to challenge you to try to find some tens. Do you see two numbers that make ten? Nine and one make ten. And seven and three make ten. So we have added here 10 and 10. We have 1, 3, 9, and 7. What number is left? 4. So we have 4 and 10 and 10. How many crayons is that? 10, 20, 24. Wow, they almost didn't give us a line at all for that. Now, draw a conclusion as to why most of the crayons are five or six centimeters. Why are most of the crayons five or six centimeters? So think about why a crayon would be shorter. We've measured crayons in our classroom and they're never the same length because why? Some of them have been used more. So if they're used more, are they shorter or longer? If you use it more, it's going to get shorter. Some of it wears away every time you use it. So then what can we conclude about the one crayon that was eight centimeters? Has it been used a lot? No. Hardly ever, maybe never. There's one crayon in her crayon box that almost never gets used out of those 24 crayons. So then seven of them have been used a little bit. Four of them have been used a lot. I'm going to guess red and blue are in that group. But five and six, why are they the most common length? Five or six centimeters. Because most of the crayons are getting used about the same. Most crayons get used about the same amount. A few get used a lot. And a few hardly, sorry, hardly ever get used. But most of our crayons, we use them. But then, like I said, red and blue, maybe for us yellow and orange, because we use those to mark, to highlight in our books. Those get used a lot. And then there's one crayon, hardly ever gets used, maybe white. We don't use white very often because you're usually using white paper. Boys and girls, thanks for working so hard. I will see you next time.